Hey guys, so it is early and I'm still tired, but today we are going to talk about why the bar is so high in IT and for programming jobs. So get, let's get into it. The other day I had a like, subscriber basically who commented one of, on one of my old videos. It was also a request video. It's a really old one which is about front-end job interview questions where I just kind of walk you through the sort of questions that I would ask a candidate and I actually have asked not just candidates but actually future employers when I've been in a job interview for a front-end position. Now in this video I give you a taste of the sort of questions that I think are relevant in such a job interview because for, quite frankly I've worked with quite enough of people and seen enough like I mean I don't know everything everything but I know enough to know what is relevant in a daily job when you do front-end work or when you primarily focus on that sort of thing and I know enough to be able to kind of figure out what is like what, what skill level people are at so this viewer responded by saying that hey you know you it seems like you're not the sort of person I would want to work for don't worry I'm not hiring anyway it's just just FYI not yet anyway and uh, then he kind of went on by saying that you and all these other like unreasonable companies seem to think that uh, there's no way that you can learn these things on the job and that you're only looking for rockstar programmers etc etc and I understand him I understand him completely because that is the lay of the land but let me explain why that is and kind of just to give you some perspective on how what what's actually going on so you know I've been complaining a lot about or complaining well let's call it complaining let's let's use that word I've been complaining a lot about that there's a lot of ambiguity in software development especially in web development and in front-end above all else and I keep on making these videos where I try to define for you what a professional programmer is and what a hobby programmer is or a freelancer or like I, I try to define these terms for you because this phenomenon where you say that the where this the, like the, the, the subscriber is is experience is the fallout of all that bullshit that's the fallout you don't understand but you will you see when you have a very well-defined job specification for what you require in order to be able to do something. In other words, if you want to be a doctor, you will not have people who have read some medical books applying for your position. You will have doctors, people with a degree applying. That's not true for software development, because if every other person who's done a few Udacity courses or some coding online think that they are professional grade programmers, they are going to cause a problem. And that problem is that they will apply to positions and try to get into the industry where companies are looking for something above their skill level. Now this is such a common problem in fact that Companies spend a lot of time just turning people down because they simply don't have the necessary skill set. They think they have them because they don't understand the difference between knowing some basic coding and knowing professional grade software development. Think of it this way. If you have a competition such as the Olymp Olympics, if you saw a person who is, gro who is fairly normal weight and you put that person next to the Olympic athletes, it would be very obvious to you that that person does not fit in into that environment. That's exactly what this is. That's the problem. The problem is that they come in and they think that they have the skills that are necessary, but they don't. And so the companies are faced with a little bit of a, a challenge. They need to somehow, because it takes a lot of time to, to screen all these people and have meetings and you don't know if they actually know the stuff that they know because of another video problem that I've talk, touched on, where people want you to believe that they know more than they do. Coding skills are very sought after, and most IT companies are looking for coding skills. I mean, even designers try to pretend that they are programmers by learning some basics, and then they say that they have coding skills. And yeah, sure, they might have coding skills that fit very well for a small-time design company, but if they go and apply for a big 
IT company which has a large, a fairly large product, they, they can't they can't cut it. It's that simple. They don't have the necessary knowledge, and that's the that's that's the reason why this is. It's not the only reason. There's one more reason I would argue that the uh, the bar is set so high. This 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 is the first thing, the absolute first thing, that people simply need to like the companies are trying to scare off the hobby programmers. The, because the job specifications are so ludicrously complicated and like have a li massive list of demands for that very reason because they know that if they have unreasonable expectations it can also of course be that the company is just stupid and doesn't understand what what reality looks like but most of the time in my experience what happens is that they got about get a bunch of candidates who kind of fit the bill they're not perfect like they don't have everything on their list and that's not what they're looking for. They're not looking for some super programmer. They're looking for someone who is close enough. And the rest of it is just gut feeling. That's why I keep on telling you juniors out there, you have to get comfortable going to a job interview. You have to have the social skills to just go in and in, 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 in a effective manner, communicate who you are and what you know, because a lot, you don't think so, but I, just the, the first thing, if you get to an interview, your CV is impressive enough. The rest is just up to you to be a culture fit for the most part. It's very, very, like, it's a 50 50 split, guys. Half of it is your CV and like your skills and what you know, and half of it is just if you are a social enough person and you will fit into that environment. That's usually how it goes. That's why introvert programmers are starting getting getting it hard finding it harder and harder to to get into the job in the job market not because they don't have the skills but because they don't understand that it's over guys you're not in a cubicle anymore this is a social environment that you're going to get into you're going to have to work with people anywho that's one of it one part the other part is this thing that i think is so dumb and this is something that i'm afraid that it's not going to go away and that is that Every single IT company who wants to be cutting edge, who wants to, uh, who perceives themselves as being closer to a company such as Google, are trying to do what Google is doing. They are trying to apply this rock star mentality because they think that if Google is doing it, they can do it as well. What Google does, and the really, really big companies, is that they have a they have an extremely hard screening process in comparison to most other companies. And they have that because they have the law, or rather they, it used to be the case, I don't know if that's still the policy, but it used to be the case that they want to hire smart people. They want to have the best and the brightest in the company. And then they, can, because if you have a tough screening process, the problem with, then you don't have to check up on people. There's trust because if you know from day one that this person is a really intelligent and a really good fit for your company, you don't have to have a bunch of managers making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing as much because you have already made sure of that from the get-go. That's much trickier to do if you like are loose and you just get people in. It's very hard to determine whether or not somebody's productive or if they're creating legacy, like legacy and like all these other issues that come with hiring somebody who is a little bit unknown. And this works very well for such a company. The reason why is because they invest millions into employer brand, employer branding. They are one of the hottest places in the, on the planet to work. And that means that they have a really large amount of people just coming in every single day. Now, smaller companies are, of course, just trying, uh, trying to copy the same type of mentality. And for some of them, it works. But what they don't understand is that they're not Google. You ha I've been at companies where I knew for a fact that they had two people in the, for, for applying for, for the same job. And they still had the same interview process which led to them not actually have like the, this, the issue is that they simply don't have like you cannot be a picker when you are a beggar for them for most companies that's the case you get to choose between having someone who's fairly close to what you need or you get to just not have anybody at all for the most part because the like it, it you can have you can be picky and you can have a really tough screening process when you are like google where you have like hundreds if not thousands of people applying every single day for all the types of positions that you could possibly want but if you're a small startup you don't have that option but you still have the mentality because unfortunately you're in this tough position where 
when you're a smaller company, you still want good, because this, guys, this is a talent business. For the most innovative projects, this is a talent business. You need people who are good. You need people, you don't need people who just know how to write software because they are not going to bring you so much value. You need people who really know their stuff and are pushing and being innovative and all that stuff for, the, for some types of projects. But, and this is what I told my subscriber, I told, or my viewer, I don't think this person was a subscriber. I told them that if you have an issue with how high the bar is in the IT world, then maybe you are looking at companies who have this ludicrous screening process because, as I said, of these things that I've been saying. There are companies out there who don't have that. Those companies are usually consultancies. Consultancies are all about, uh, for the most part, all about renting out hours. In their, like they, their business model is just that they provide usually really large companies with just coding skills. Trust me when I say that there is a really big slope difference or like the differences between consultants is massive from consultant to consultant because you're just renting out hours. For a consultancy, the bar is not even close as high as for a trendy startup or a product company of some sort in general. And then you have government, government work, that sort of thing. The bar isn't all that high either because their systems are usually not the most modern cutting edge things. They are not about innovation. They are about, for the most part, just making sure that they can do what they need in order to make sure that their systems are running because there are a lot of people depending on those systems. They're not a business. They're not trying to innovate and push things. So that's also a place where you can go if you feel the bar is too high for like the cutting edge IT businesses. And finally, you have really large corporations such as, say, here in, in Gothenburg, it's Volvo. The requirements they have on their developers, I mean, they want talented developers, of course. But the problem is that they simply don't have, and in, like, talented developers are rare, guys. You can pretty much, if you're really good at what you do, you can almost pick where you want to work. And they know that. They can't offer you the sort of working environment that is as cool as Google or Facebook or name your favorite IT company. They, they don't have those types of, it's not that sort of company. So they, but they still need programmers. So they simply have to take what they can get. For the most part, that is your average level programmers. They're not looking, they, they want rock stars, but it's not a hard requirement that everybody is a rock star. So I hope I've give you, given you some insight as to why you may think that there's a high bar on getting into IT. And for some cases it is. But I want, you, what you want, I want you to take away from this is that not every single company has the sky high bar of everybody needs to be a rock star. Some companies just pe want people with coding skills. And then that's good enough. So hopefully you now remember that number one, not everybody needs to be a rock star in IT, even though everybody would like you to be. Second thing is because there are so many people out there Trying to, explain, trying to convey to you or trying to fool you into believing that you are a professional programmer if you know how to write a Hello World application, this issue, it, it keeps on growing. And unfortunately, we don't really have a good solution for that as of right now. I just hope that we will get to a point where people will start to understand more about IT and you start to realize what real software development is about. So you can make a distinction between what, it, as I said, with the with the Olympic athlete versus the normal person. When the differences are that obvious in IT, that's where I think the things are gonna go back to a sane world where not everybody has to be a rock star. That's what I think at least. Have a great day.